Hi, I'm the Golden Monarch. I started my company, Hippy Dippy Gypsy, to share my passion for life with you. This is my cooking video on how to make a Thai soup. It's one of my all-time favorite dishes to make, and according to my loved ones, it's one of their favorites to eat. I hope you enjoy it. So now we're going to dice our tomato. This is a Kumato tomato. They're the tomatoes that I prefer because they taste the best. A lot of tomatoes have a very bitter, kind of tangy, weird taste to them. Kumatos don't, which is why I use them. So we're just gonna dice it, and we're only gonna use probably about half, maybe a little bit more. We'll dice the entire thing just so we have enough. And we'll put it in this bowl so we keep everything nice and tidy. And you don't want these to be too small, you want them kind of large. You want them small if you're going to put them in like salsa or something, but if you're going to cook them, you want them in larger pieces so that it doesn't overcook them too soon. Uh, it doesn't want to stay together for me. <laughs> put these in this little bowl here so that it's very easy to pour out when we're ready to do the soup. So one of the, our ingredients is the English pea and a lot of people try and use snow peas for soup. I find that the texture is not good for soup so I prefer any type of shelled pea other than snow peas. These were the only ones in season at the store, so they're English peas. So we're gonna be using English peas today. And you don't want them in the shell, so we're gonna to have to shell them in order to get one fourth cup of shelled English peas. I found that the best way of shelling them is to twist open the pods and then you can sort of unravel the pod and then the peas just pop out. Although sometimes they're a little stubborn. Another way is you can also squish them. and then the whole pod just opens up. Now that we have our peas shelled, we need to make sure that we have a fourth of a cup, or in other words, four tablespoons of shelled peas. So now we want to chop up our broccoli, and we only need about half a cup of broccoli. So we're going to get this off of here, because that's annoying. And let's see, right about like so. That should probably make about half a cup. 
we want to chop off the stems. And then we'll just chop this into smaller sections because you know we don't want we don't want to eat big chunks of broccoli for a soup. And we want to get the heads, as many of the heads as possible, and this is about half a cup. So wow, I, I way overestimated there. Okay, so we now have half a cup of broccoli florets, and we're now going to chop up our carrots because half a cup of broccoli florets is all we need. So now we're gonna chop up our carrots and we need about half a cup of carrots. And so we're just gonna start by chopping off both ends because those are kind of crusty and old and we don't want them. Now I often like to cut them in half and take the thicker end and cut it in half. and then lay it flat. If some pieces end up being too thick, just cut them so that they're a fairly equal size to the rest. Let's see if we have half a cup. And here's our half a cup of carrots. Delicious. So now we're going to be doing our ginger and you'll notice that this is a little bit rough right here. That's because it was cut. So what you want to do is when you're picking out your ginger, you want to break it. If it has a nice yellow color right there, then it's a nice, fresh, juicy piece of ginger. Okay, so now we're going to want to peel our ginger and you just want to take a knife and sort of whittle at it the way you would whittle a stick or carve a stick. Now a lot of times these little nodules can be annoying so we're just going to cut that off along with the woody part. Okay, now you can see it's a lot easier to handle and we have a lot less to peel. Okay, now that we've whittled away all of the skin, we need to take it and grind it into something that we can actually use. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a citrus, it's called a citrus peeler, but um, we're going to take this and use it to grind the ginger up so that it's able to be absorbed in the soup. All right. And that's about one tablespoon, so we need one more to be able to have enough because Thai soup generally uses a lot of ginger and we want it to be very flavorful. And the thing about making soup is you're going to be adding spices along the way. You're not just going to add all of your flavor at once. So we want to make sure we have enough to add at different 
time variations of cooking the soup. And now we have a nice, fresh, juicy pile of ginger that will taste absolutely amazing once it's soaked up into the broth. So next we're gonna be chopping up our tofu and we're gonna be substituting enough tofu to make up for about one large chicken breast. And so I get this high protein tofu and I find that it works really well. So we're going to open this and take it out. It didn't open. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, I think I got it. Maybe not. <laughs> it's not behaving for me. <laughs> okay, we're resorting to the knife. Okay. Yay! We got it. So we're going to take this out of the package. And we're going to chop up about, about that much. Because that'll make up for about one large chicken breast. And hopefully I can put this back in the package without making a mess. Yay! It's a, it's a small accomplishment, but I like to think it's something. So now we're just gonna slice them into thick slices and lay the slices down and sort of chop them up. And they don't have to be uniform, but they do have to be fairly the same size. You want it about like that. And I'm making a mess. What is cooking without making a mess? It's not fun, I can tell you that. Okay, we're just gonna chop that a little bit more. Chop that one in half and we're done. And now that I'm messy, there is our chopped tofu. So now we're going to cut a lemon in half because we want to squeeze it, just a little bit of the juice into the soup to make it nice and tart. So then we're just going to set this aside and have it ready for when we're cooking our soup. Okay, so now we're going to do our garlic and we're just gonna cut off the top and take a couple cloves and peel them and chop them and then we'll have our garlic ready. Now this is elephant garlic. I prefer to use elephant garlic because it has a flavor that's halfway in between garlic and onions. So you don't need to put onions in this soup because this is gonna make up for the flavor difference that adding onions would normally do. Okay, and we just want two cloves about like that. And I learned this trick of shaking them in a jar to get them. It's not gonna work, is there? Oh, it did work. So what it does is it cracks it open, so it's a lot easier to just peel off. Now, if they're smaller cloves, then it'll peel them entirely. But because these are, this is elephant garlic and it's so large, it won't do it entirely. So there we have one. And there we have 
too. Now we just need to clean up and chop these up. First we're going to chop off the ends and then we're going to cut them into smaller slices. And because elephant garlic is much more mild than normal garlic, you can get away with doing bigger pieces. And we kind of want them bigger because we're going to be throwing it in early in the soup. So they're going to be nice and soft and they're not going to be hard to eat at all. That is a little bit thick though. So we're going to put that down and just chop it into smaller sections. Generally speaking, you want bigger squares, about like that. And you would think that that would be a little bit much, but trust me, it's not. And there we have it, two and a half cloves of elephant garlic chopped up into larger pieces. So first thing we want to do is we want to sear our tofu in the ginger and the garlic so we really get that nice intense flavor in it and it'll make it really yummy. So we're going to take our tofu and throw it in the pan. Then we're going to take two tablespoons of grapeseed oil. And you really don't want much more than that. And you really don't want any less. Then we're going to take about half of the ginger. Throw it in there and about half of the garlic. And you wanna sear that on about medium heat. This burner tends to run pretty hot, so I'm gonna do it a little below half. That way it'll sear it nice and it won't burn. Okay, now that our tofu is seared and the garlic and ginger have really seeped into it, we're going to add one cup of vegetable broth. And that's how you steam things up. <laughs> and two cans of coconut milk. And it's very important to get the unsweetened coconut milk. We're not making a sweet soup, we're making a savory soup. So if you get the sweetened coconut milk by accident, it can mess with the savory flavor of the soup.
So ge the general rule with a Thai soup is that you want to put in half the amount of broth as you have coconut milk. And now that we have our broth and our coconut milk, we're going to add some spices. You want to add about one tablespoon of curry powder and some cayenne and some black pepper. Now this is a new thing of curry powder, so unfortunately I have to open it. I really don't care for the way that they, they seal these things. They're adult proof. Ah, there we go. It's like, how do they think kids are gonna get into this? Adults can't even. So, we're just going to That's about one tablespoon of curry powder. We're going to sprinkle that in. Now we want to take a little bit of cayenne and we just want a pinch. We don't want anything more so I'm going to take this off and I'm going to reach in and grab a pinch and sprinkle that on in. And then you want some ground black pepper. Again just a pinch just a pinch and that's it because we're not trying to over season it we just want a little hint of the flavor to show through it's not supposed to be something where you're like <coughs> pepper all right and then you're gonna let that simmer for about five minutes and then you'll move on to the next step now one of the reasons why we do this rather than like adding all the ingredients as, and at once is because we want those flavors to be layered and when you add all the flavors in at once it doesn't layer them nicely you know that's just like having all your good experiences in life at once it, you know it, it just doesn't make for a full lovely life and so you want your soup to be kind of like that you want your good flavors to be spread out over the period of time that you cook the soup. Okay, so while we are letting our soup simmer, we're going to cover it and we're going to move it to the back burner and we're going to start our quinoa. Now you want to do about two cups of quinoa and then you want to do two cans of coconut milk. And one of the best tips I ever got about cooking quinoa is to toast it. Now you can do that in a saute pan with a little grapeseed oil. Just toast it real lightly or cheat like I did and get the toasted quinoa. Alrighty, so there's one cup and there's two cups. So basically one full bag of this. And then we're going to put our other two cans of coconut milk in the quinoa and we're going to let it cook in the quinoa. Rather than pouring water, most people cook quinoa in water. I found that it's not very flavorful. The coconut milk, much nicer.
now you want to stir it. Make sure it's all nice and mixed in. Because unlike water, coconut milk is much thicker. So if you don't make sure that it's all mixed in, it can have a tendency to cook unevenly. And that's just not cool. We want nice fluffy quinoa that's cooked evenly. If it's not cooked evenly, there'll be some of the quinoa that's still a little hard and hasn't puffed up. So we want to make sure that it's all puffed up and nice. All right. Now we're going to put that on just a little bit of a simmer and cover it and it will be done in about 15 minutes. So now that we've gotten our quinoa going, it's been about five minutes since we've stirred our soup. So now we're gonna add our carrots. And our broccoli. And then we're also gonna add another pinch of black pepper because like I said, it's all about layering the flavors. We don't want to add too much, too little, and we don't want to add it all at the same time. We want to really have that nice flavor throughout and different levels of intensity. And the longer it cooks, the less intense the flavor. So if you want a more intense flavor, you have to add the flavor at a later date or continually just keep putting in a little to keep that nice balance. So we're gonna stir this again, and we're gonna let this sit about 10 minutes, and then come back and add some more. Okay, so now it's been about 10 minutes since we added those last ingredients into our soup, and now we're gonna add some more flavor into it. First, we're gonna start with the rest of the ginger. Then we're gonna do the rest of the garlic. And now we're gonna add a little bit more spice. I keep talking about how you wanna layer the spices and it just, it works so well. So we're gonna add about two more pinches of cayenne and one pinch of black pepper. And then we're gonna do half a teaspoon of Celtic sea salt. And then we're just gonna stir it up quinoa is about halfway done. When it gets to be about five minutes away from being fully cooked, then we're going to add in the peas and the tomatoes, and really the dish will start to really come together. Even now, it smells amazing. So we're just going to cover it up and let it simmer. So it's about five minutes before our quinoa is done. As you can see, is starting to just bubble up and you're starting to see the bubbles. And that's about when it's about five minutes away from being done. And right when it's about there, you wanna put in the tomatoes and the peas into the soup. So we're just going to dump those right in, the peas as well. And then we're going to put in a teaspoon more of salt. Salt dissipates over time, so we want to make sure that we have enough in there for when it's all finished, so that way it'll really heighten the flavor really nicely. And then we're going to do just a hint more of black pepper. All right. And the next step is the quinoa will be done, and then we can put it in the bowl and 
enjoy it. So now our quinoa is done. And you can, you can tell because there's no like milky film on top. So now we're going to pour one tablespoon of, quinoa, of agave. We're going to pour one tablespoon of agave over the quinoa and mix it in. go. Get every last bit of that sweetness out of there. And now you're going to fluff it up and mix it all in. Right, and it's done. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your bowl and you're gonna spoon a generous amount of this into the bottom, just like so. And then you're gonna take your soup and you're gonna stir it up a bit and you're gonna ladle it over the quinoa. Oh yeah. And then you can use some broccoli florets to garnish if you like. that one will behave. And there you go. A perfect Thai dish.